All right, guys, welcome back to the second top four match here of the Game Cafe PC. Uh, this For this top four match, we're going to have Ricky Green versus Josh Adams. And as we can see, teams here, Ricky changing up his team from yesterday, running Arcanine, Tapu Fini, Marowak, Gastrodon, Feromosa, and Celestila. Josh still running basically the same team with that Araquanid, Porygon 2, Marowak, Milotic, Cartana, and a Muck. So interesting teams, interesting team here from Ricky. That Feromosa is just such a big threat in this meta. Of course, being very fast, being very hard hitting. However, it is extremely frail. But looking at Josh's team, not a lot for that Feromosa besides that Marowak being able to completely wall it. So be interesting to see if that is what Ricky chooses to go for. However, we know that Josh, from this team concept, is probably going to look to play that slower game. So, we're going to see which if he which trick room sweepers he's going to decide to go with. Because if he tries to go, with, say that Araquanid, of course there is that Gastrodon on Ricky's side, which can just completely wall that Araquanid thanks to its Storm Drain ability. We're going to see Josh locking his team here, and to see if Ricky follows up here soon. So going to be should be a very good matchup two from two very different team concepts here so it'll be interesting to see how they combat each other so finally jumping into game and we're gonna of course we're gonna have two trainers here josh not having that battle pose while rick while ricky with that peace sign and we have josh issuing challenge to ricky gonna see the leads here of tabu finny Feramosa. For Ricky, so getting that threat of Feromosa right out on the field, and Milotic and Marowak coming out for Josh. So Tapu Finny here, of course, is threatening that Marowak with a potential water move. So, but of course, Josh can can just easily switch in his Gastron on either of these slots to take that take that potential water move from Tapu Finny. However. If Gastrodon tries to switch in here, Feromosa can just easily blow it up with a all-out pummeling if that is what it chooses to have. And because of that, we might see that Milotic try and switch out, maybe, so it does not or just preserve itself for later. Of course, we do have an Arcanine on Ricky's team, so maybe wanting to get that competitive boost later on, but we actually see Feromosa protect here, as well as the Marowak for Josh. So... We actually see Top of Finney going for a Dazzling Gleam here. Not that water move. So, going to do decent damage to the Milotic. Doing about 20%. We see a Scald from that Melodic into Feromosa. So, locking a Dazzling Gleam like that with Top of Finney, Probably expecting a Gastrodon switch in. And because that Dazzling Gleam was the move of choice, might have to think that this is a choice specs Top of Finney. As if it was a Calm Mindset. We usually Dazzling Gleam is usually a move that is bypassed for Moonblast or Muddy Water. And we see Feromosa is going to switch out here for Ricky, wanting to preserve that threat for later on. And we see Gashadon come in here. So if Milotic like, does go for that Skull, it's going to give Gashadon a plus one boost. Dazzling Gleam going to bring Milotic down into the yellow. And we see Gashadon does get that get that Storm Drain boost from the Skull. Marowak Shadow Bone on the top of Finny. Going to do very good damage, bringing that down well below half. 63 HP remaining on that top of Finny. So, interesting position here for the Gastrodon. With that Storm Drain boost, is going to be able to more than likely KO this Marowak. However, Marowak could simply protect like it is here, or we could see a Gastrodon switch in here in the future turns. Top of Finny going to go for a Dazzling Gleam. Will not be able to pick up the KO on, My on Milotic. So, it'll be interesting to see if Milotic just decides to recover, potentially. But we actually are going to see a Dragon Tail from Milotic getting rid of this Gastrodon and that threat of Storm Drain. And it's going to bring back out the Feromosa. So, very interesting move there from Josh. Dragon Tail Milotic is not something we see all that often. You usually see a set of Scald, Ice Beam, Recover, and Protect. So, maybe that. Dragon Tail signifying that there could be an Assault Vest on this Melodic. But we see a Lunge come out from Feromosa. Going to do decent damage to the Marowak. Of course, getting an Attack Drop there could be potentially important for 
if Tapu Fini is somehow able to hold on from the Shadow Bone, but more than likely just trying to increase the bulk of the Pokemon in the back for later turns, Shadow Bone will pick up that KO on Tapu Fini despite the attack drop from the lunge on Faramosa. So each side trading off their water types here. However, we do have another water type in the back for Ricky in the form of that Gastrodon. So could see that switch in here to try and deal with this Marowak. And it is what we see. So Marowak gonna be so Gastron gonna be threatening that Marowak with the skull. Then we see Cartana come out for Josh. Do not remember what item this Cartana had, but if it is a focus sash, could be very important because it will be able to take any fighting move Feromosa wants to throw at it and be able to KO this Gastron right back with the Leaf Blade. And of course that would open up Marowak for just being able to pick up a free KO on Feromosa. So be interesting to see what that Cartana item is, because it will dictate how the game will play out. So, of course, could just see a gash on something go for protect, not wanting to take a leaf blade, and just potentially just letting his Faramosa go down. But we see brick break from Faramosa, not the high jump kick we typically see. And Cartana is holding that focus sash, so but actually choosing to go for smart strike. So maybe expecting that Gashadon to protect itself there. And Faramosa is revealing its own focus sash. So not going to go down there, but we see that Shadow Bone just picking up the KO. So Josh making sure that Feramosa went down this turn. But we see Scald coming out from Gashadon. Going to pick up the KO on this Marowak. Marowak going down. However, did pick up a couple KOs. So Josh can't be too upset that too upset with what Marowak was able to do this game. But seeing Brick Break on that Feramosa is very interesting play. Maybe not wanting to go for the high jump kick for the potential of missing and thus losing his focus sash. So maybe something to note there that, that Feramosa might not, could still be carrying focus sash. Excuse me, could still be carrying the high jump kick, but just having that brick break for a safer fighting move of choice in certain situations. We see Araquanid come out for Josh and Feramosa, not Feramosa, Celestia coming out for Ricky, excuse me. Uh, Celesteela will be able to pick up a KO on this Cartana, thanks to it being down to Focus Dash, but Gashadon's going to be very important for being next to the Celesteela, because that Araquanid could easily just blow up Celesteela with a Zemu, with its Hydro Vortex, if that is what's running, Leech Seed into the Araquanid, and we see, we just see a double protect here from Josh, so just wanting to scout out a potential protect from that Gashadon on Ricky's side, but not getting it, so maybe signifying that Ricky does not have Protect on that Gastrodon, but so could it'll be interesting to see what comes of that if Josh just makes the assumption that there is no Protect and just decides to go right after it this turn. And we do see him go right after Gastrodon with the Leaf Blade, going to pick up the KO onto that Gastrodon. So no more Storm Drain will allow Araquanid to fire off a Water-type attack into the self Stila. Cartana, of course, getting its Beast Boost, that attack raise, and we see Celesteela Taking him to KO on the Cartana with the Heavy Slam. So we're going to see what its Beast Boost will be. And that will be its attack as well. So very offensive here. We actually see a Leech Life from Araquanid on the Celestial doing almost no damage here. So Celesteela with that Leftover is going to get back up to full health. And a potential play we could see here from the Celesteela is simply going for a Protector Substitute, trying to bait that Z-move out from Araquanid. Of course, if it goes for Protect, it will do 25, only 25% of its full damage output. We actually see a Leech Seed here. And Araquanid going for that Liquidation on to Celesteela. So maybe thinking the sa of the same thing, not wanting to burn that Z-move just quite yet. So we're going to... For Celesteela, going to heal up. Going to get back up to above health thanks to that recovery from the Leech Seed and the Leftovers. And Araquanid just taking a little bit of chip damage here. Uh, going to be interesting to see if Celesteela is able going to be able to win the Stall War. Of course, it is known for its stalling capabilities, but Araquanid is just going to be able to deal so much damage to it. Of course, going for a Protect, they're just wanting to get more, more HP back. And we see that Leech Seed will bring Araquanid down to about 80% health. But more importantly, that leaves all this recovery is now going to make, allow Celesteela to take two more liquidations. However, 
from this range. Do not know if it will be able to take a Hydro Vortex. See, so still go for Heavy Slam, not opting for, a, say, a substitute, dealing a lot of damage to Araquanid thanks to that attack boost. But we do see the Hydro Vortex come out from Josh. Will Should be enough to pick up the KO on the Celesteela, given that is it is a more offensive variant of Celesteela like we have been seeing recently. Hydro Vortex will be... We'll drag this Celesteela down into that Whirlpool. How much is this going to do? And it is able to pick up a knockout. So very good play by Josh, preserving that Zemu in order to win the Stall War against that Celesteela. So very close game there. And with that, very interesting what you can go on in game two. Each player there, each player revealing some interesting text on their team. Of course, Faramosa revealing that it has Brick Break. And of course, the, and, of course, the Ultra Beast on each side revealing that they are indeed Focus Sash, as well as Celesteela revealing that it is an offensive variant. So definitely change up the game plans there, seeing those items in natures there for each Pokemon. Uh, we saw that also we got good information. Josh got good information on Ricky's Tabu Fini that it is indeed Choice Specs. So, play we could, so once Josh is able to lock that into a move, he'll be able to play much more accordingly in order to beat that Tabu Fini. Uh, another interesting note we got there was Gashon not going for any protect, so potentially not having that could be big for Josh, just knowing that whenever it is out on the field against Cartana, he can just attack to into that slot without no without any fear of, of that protect and just being able to pick up a quick knockout. But we're going to go back into team preview. Ricky Green is on your left, running a team of Arcanine, Tapu Fini, Marowak, Gashon, Faramosa, and Celesteela. Josh on your right, running team of Araquanid, Porygon 2, Marowak, Milotic, Muck, and Cartana. So, Pokemon that'll be interesting to see here could potentially be that Muck or the Porygon. Of course, Milotic really did not really didn't do much of anything except giving Gastrodon a special attack boost with the Storm Drain, but it also revealed that Dragon Tail. So don't know Milotic really didn't do much of anything that game because we did not see the Arcanine come out from Ricky, so maybe that'll be switched out in favor of Muck, just trying to get more bulk off, more bulky on his sides, try and switch in, just try and get in more switch-ins on that, more switch-ins against that Faramosa, seeing that is lacking that very, very high base-powered high jump kick, so maybe Muck will be able to take a couple of those. So, But we see Josh locking in his team here, and... Soon to be followed here by Ricky. All right. Sorry, guys. Stream started lagging out there. But we are going to start jumping into game. Of course, Ricky will be on your bottom screen. And Josh will be on the top. So, Josh going to be issuing this challenge to Ricky. Going to be interesting to see what these trainers decided to ver- to change up with their leads. However, we Ricky not th- feeling that anything is wrong with his lead, going to keep it the same with that Tapu Fini and Faramosa. However, Josh going up with a complete change, even though he won the last game, going with Muck and Porygon 2. And we see Porygon 2 going to get an attack boost, so unless it is running a f- frustration or return, that attack boost will basically be useless. However, and... Of course, that Faramosa item being reviewed last game is very important for Josh, as well as knowing that it has Brick Break over High Jump Kick, because Faramosa will not be able to knock out this Porygon 2 in one hit. So Porygon can potentially just could just go straight for that Trick Room, giving his Muck the speed advantage, and just being able to put massive dents into Ricky's team. So, of course, all, for Ricky, play is depth. Definitely should be afraid of that Porygon 2 and Strickham going up, given how fast his team is. I know he has the Marowak and the Gastrodon. However, Gastrodon not really good against either of these Pokemon on Josh's side. Brick Brick not even doing 50% to Porygon. So just showing how, show, really showing there why High Jump Kick is the move of choice, just being able to do so much damage. We see that Poison Jab from Muck in the top of an E, going to be a two hit KO. With that move, with that super effective move against it, and Porygon 2 does indeed go for Trick Room. Of course, Porygon, if 
Josh wants to remove the threat of this Feromosa, it's going to have to double target it thanks to it holding a Focus Sash. So it be interesting to see if he decides to protect the Feromosa for later by either going for that Protect or switching out into, into the Gastrodon or the, Mar- or the Marowak, just trying to get the speed advantage under Trick Room. Tapu Fini, though, n- not in the good, all that good of a spot either. Of course, it is locked in a Dazzling Gleam thanks to those Choice Specs. And Muck can just simply knock it out. But we're not going to see it switch. We are going to see Fermosa switch in, switch out for that Gastrodon. Muck going for a Poison Jab. Just wanting to pick up the KO on this Guardian. And then will succeed in doing so. So Tapu Fini going down. That massive special attacker. Gone from Ricky's side. And we see Porygon 2 going for a recover. So safe play there. Knowing that Fermosa will not be able to KO the next turn. In a, or just anticipating a switch out from it. We see Cell Steela come in against these two against four against these two not as hard hitting Pokemon like the Arachnid in the back. So Cell Steela here could just start going for Leech Seed, setting up substitutes, doing what it does best and playing the playing out the long game here. Gastron also in an interesting spot if it has Toxic could be very important for later on in the game, however his own Missy turn is preventing it from coming out on his side. So it'll be Gash more than likely just going to have to start throwing off Scalds into either of these Pokemon, just trying to get chip damage that way instead. Of course, Porygon 2, we could, don't know if Cortana will want to come in here, given how fair, frail it is, and we saw its focus sash. So no switches on Josh. So we see a Scald and a Porygon 2 doing decent damage there with that Water move. We see knockoff from Muck on a Celesteela doing good damage once again, knocking off the leftovers. So going to be limiting Celesteela's healing a little bit. But we see Moringa Berry from Gastrodon. So Gastrodon's going to be even bulkier than before. Going to be taking these tri attacks a lot better than what it just than what it just previously did. Interesting that that Muck did not go for knockoff into the Gastrodon slot, knowing that he could just knock off that Celesteela wasn't going isn't going anywhere in these next couple turns and could have just knocked off those leftovers here later. So, but because of that, Gastron going to have this special defense boost, going to be taking a lot less damage from Porygon or anything that Josh has in the back, like say that Milotic, which is really the only other special attacker on jo- on Josh's team. So better position here from Gastrodon because it will not take as much damage from that Muck knockoff. However, I kn- this Muck is still going to be a threat because it could potentially start boosting up with a curse. However, if Ricky is going to want to attack into that Muck, Muck is known for that gluttony and figgy berry combination. Well, it's not going to want to take advantage of that. Going to switch out into Araquanid. So Araquanid coming out into in the face of a Gastrodon even though it cannot do all that much, can't do anything because of that Storm Gen ability. We see Cartana switching as well. Gastrodon Scald into Araquanid. Not going to be able to be burned thanks to the Misty Terrain as well as its Water Bubble ability. And we see Leech Seed onto the Cartana slot. It's a very good play there by Josh. Getting in his Grass-type Cartana to threaten this Gastrodon as well as take that Leech Seed and not risk losing its Focus Sash. Araquanid putting decent... Cons- Still put decent pressure off onto this Gastrodon with that Leech Life that I revealed. But Cartana going to go for a Detect here, not wanting to take a potential Flamethrower from Celesteela. And Gastrodon simply going to go for the Recover. Rack when it does go for Leech Life into Gastrodon. Doing decent damage, doing about 20-25% there and healing itself back up to full HP. Celesteela does reveal Flamethrower into that Cartana Detect. So Cartana knowing it is not free to start attacking However, the Trick Room will run up. And of course, we do not. We know Gastrodon might not have that Protect, so Cortana can just go for a Leaf Blade into that slot and pick up a KO. And as we saw at the end of Game 1, Araquina can pick up a one-hit knockout on this Celesteela with the Hydro Vortex from this range. So, so going to be interesting to see what Ricky does to avoid taking these two giant hits. Feromosa comes in, so going to lose its Focus Sash here to the Leaf Blade from Cortana. Going to still do a lot of damage thanks to Cartana's massive attack and Pheromos' pitiful defenses. Celsius Flamethrower onto Cartana. Is this going to pick up a burn potentially and just knock it out right now? No, it does not. However, Arachnid going for a Leech Life 
on to the Feromosa slot. So getting rid of that threat to the Kartana. So now Kartana will be the fastest Pokemon on either side of the field and can simply knock out the Gastrodon this turn with a Leaf Blade and allow Arachnid to go right for that Hydro Vortex. So very tough position here for Ricky. Not really putting that much offensive pressure down onto either of these Pokemon. Especially that Arachnid. Arachnid is going to resist every all the attacking options from his Pokemon. So going to have to find a way to deal with that threat. Of course, Gastrodon, if it does have that Toxic, could start whittling it down. However, Kartana is going to be here to prevent that with a Leaf Blade like we saw it go for last turn. So, like I said, not really much Ricky can do to try and pull this back. Very well managed game by Josh, getting getting his Kartana in the safe spot to where he could not lose that Focus Dash. But we see Kartana actually going for a Protect, so still trying to scout out that Gastrodon Protect and just not getting it, more than likely due to a lack of Protect from the Gastrodon. Leech Light doing good damage there to Gastrodon. And we do see the Toxic come out from that Slug, going to poison the opposing Araquanid. So Arachnid is going to start getting whittled down this turn thanks to that Toxic and the Leech Seed that Celestia just put onto that slot. So Celestia going to have a lot of work in front of it. Going to more than likely have to stall out three different Pokemon here. So, of course, we have seen stranger things come out from Celestia. If there is a Pokemon capable of winning a 3v1 stall war, it is going to be that UB04 Blaster. Gash down here, still not in a good position. Very good play to get that Toxic off onto the Arachnid, just assisting his buddy Celestia in his attempt to stall out Josh's team. However, Cartana, more than likely just knowing that Gash down not picking up, going for a Protect now, just going to decide to pick up that Knockout with a Leaf Blade. So no more Toxics from Ricky's side. And we're just going to see Cartana get that Beast Boost. Going to be attack, of course. And we see how Celesteel go for a Heavy Slam and target... Cartana, so picking up its own attack beast boost. However, Araquanid is just waiting here on the side. Going to more than likely just blow up the Celesteela with a Z move. And of course, we do see it. It is going to be that Hydro Vortex from Araquanid unleashing its full force Z move. Going to be dragging Celesteela down into that Whirlpool. And we saw it pick up a knockout from about 80% last game, so it'll be interesting to see if it can pick it up right now, given how Salsila is a little bit healthier. But Arachnid is so strong, thanks to that water bubble ability. Just blows up Celestila in a very well-manned set by Josh. He's gonna take this set, it's gonna take it 2-0 over Ricky Green. So he will be playing Leonard in finals now. And I'm very intrigued by that matchup. Josh managed this set really well. And, start and just punish Ricky's defensive play there on a few instances. And Leonard, of course, is known for his defensive play as well, so it'll be interesting to see if he can do more of the same in that set. But good tournament to Ricky. Uh, given I like the Feramosa. I think Feramosa is a very big threat. So just, show, so just showcasing that here, of course, it was the biggest threat on his team. However, Josh was able to manage that very well and remove it quickly, just letting his sweepers pick up the win. So... Good, well played set by both. Interested to see the finals, so we'll be take a short break and come right back. 